This is how markets work. Mar markets fundamentally misprice, I, I, I'll stress again, markets misprice in two tarika. The market overvalues the crook, the market undervalues the monopolist. Right? That's the fundamental paradox on which money is made. The market will consistently overvalue the crook. Right? The crook will look like a god until the day he's wiped out 90-95% correction. Aega. Until that day, he will look like a god, right? And I'll, I'll, we'll take you through a few more stories of that. And the monopolist will not reveal himself as the monopolist. He will look like a ordinary company, Superman Clark Kent, right? Super, wo Clark Kent dikhega, Superman nahi dikhega, right? He will not show himself. Why should he? Our job is to figure out he's Superman. Our job is to price. Our price job is to value Superman accordingly. Even the Superman will say, Main Clark Kent too. Okay, so let me move on. Uh, life was carrying on nicely until in Jan 07, with a nudge from John K, we did an in-depth forensic investigation of the British mortgage market, right? Uh, uh, British mortgage market was growing great guns in Jan 07, and John said, this is not making sense. So we got into a car, drove, to, uh, drove around the country, this is drove around England and Scotland, and we wrote this note on 7th January 2007. Uh, a note which became sort of legendary in the UK called Risk Amplifiers on Full Volume, saying this country will blow up. 7 Jan 07, we wrote a 30 pager saying this country is going to blow up because low quality mortgage lending is being done. The banks' balance sheets are going to blow up. You should, if you, are, if you are investing in these stocks, you should get the hell out of here, right? And uh, in a way, you, all of you know what happened in the remaining, in the subsequent uh, 18 months. From, from Feb 07, Feb 07, we wrote this note. Lehman happened September 08, right? So we were 18 months early. By the time summer 07 came in, uh, when, say, Rakshit, myself, and the financials team used to speak about this subject, British people used to fight to get a seat in the room, right? Because their point was, in logo kuch sach pata hai, the clear capital team have figured out something that if we don't hear in this very meeting, then kal subay sunenge to dunya tabah ho jayegi. At one level, they were right. But another level, unfortunately for them, even by summer 07, Gadi Nikal Chuki thi, damage was already underway, right? So this note, risk amplifies on full volume and the subsequent iterations, ultimately led to us getting our clients out. Jan 08, iske ek saal baad, we started looking for a buyer for the firm because we knew, although we were profitable, we knew the world was heading for a full-fledged meltdown, right? Now, why am I highlighting this? That when we make a, when we make a call about what the state of a country is, we do so with a lot of thoughts. So if I go back again to March 2020, right? March 2020, when we did a, a, a conference call with our then modest client base, when we said in our newsletter and in our TV appearances that this is a massive buying opportunity. Again, that this sort of detailed research goes behind it. When we see a structural blow up like this, we flag it and vice versa. Those of you who are reading our, uh, uh, those of you who are reading our newsletters and blogs would have heard from my various colleagues that we see the next five years as being enormously profitable and productive for India. So we sold this company. We migrated to India, the, this, the, the airport just outside this hotel. Uh, I remember 12th May, 12th May 2008, uh, my wife and I landed with our six-month-old son. Now, one of the reasons we migrated to India after selling the company was we did some very basic mathematics. Uh, as I said, my son was uh, uh, six months old then. And we said that assume India just grows at 6%, just 6% real GDP. 25 years hence, we realized the boy would enter the job market. If you did 6% compounding on India for 25 years, you realize that by 2032, this would be the world's third largest economy. By the way, now it's highly likely will be the world's third largest economy well before 2032. But you know, you're making a call on your life, you better have margin of safety, right? So, so, so I turned to my better half and said that they hope we have a choice in life. We can raise the bacha, and subsequently, we, were, we, were, we had a daughter as well, we can raise the kids either in the Western Hemisphere, in which case they'll have a happy life, but they'll not be able to participate in the world's third largest economy. Or you raise the bachas in the world's third largest economy, and when they grow up, they can make a choice. If they really want to live abroad, like a lot of Indians do, wo asan hai. it's not very difficult to move to Singapore, Dubai, London, New York, etc. That's, you know, you just have to buy a ticket and go there, right? Uh, it's not labor shortage, hai. Uh, uh, they'll take you. But, but if you grow up there, uh, it's super tough, right? You grow up there, just imagine, right, working in Chakala, you've grown up in London, <laughs> working in Chakala, right? Ab traffic jam mein rote bat jaoge. So, so uh, the pitch worked, we rocked up here, uh, uh, right? And 
and we started reading Indian annual reports, right? Now, this links directly to what's happening uh, uh, in the portfolio right now. And after around three, four months of sitting in Pawai and reading annual reports, we said, yeah, these books don't make any sense. These are large companies. Uh, these are large companies. They're supposed to be making money. They show profits, but cash flow nahi hai. Koi free cash flow nahi hai. Through uh, 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 very complicated subterfuges, they're making the cash disappear, right? That's when Ashwin Shetty joined us, 2009 Ashwin, right? He joined us from the big four. Uh, and that's when we realized that the Indian chartered accountant is a superman, right? And we went long, heavy long, Abhi bhi super heavy long hum on the Indian chartered accountant because the Indian chartered accountant, right, is really well trained. It's a very rigorous exam. Uh, unfortunately, I am not an Indian CA, uh, but we have 16 such supermen in our office, supermen and women in our office. Um, and we realized that all we need to do is learn from them chori kaise hota in India mein, right? And uh, uh, if you guys, if you guys, uh, uh, you should ask your relevant Marcellus contact to organize a session with our uh, forensic team on Aapka paisa, mera paisa, mere parents ka paisa, India mein chori kaise hota hai. So the book that, that we learned from a lot from this, this book called uh, uh, Financial Shenanigans. This is the old version. I think naya version aa chuka hai. I think fourth ya fifth edition aa chuka hai. Incredible book on accounting fraud. Anybody in this audience who wants to understand the world over. This, is an, this book explains chori in USA, UK, Japan. But um, you know, as, you can ex ex uh, as you can understand, there's no, there's no promised land, right? Now, uh, as we were doing this, right, we were meeting corrupt promoters. Every week we would choose one corrupt promoter to meet and we would discuss how, how he was stealing money. Uh, in November 2010, Vinod Rai Ji uh, uh, published, he went live on TV. Vinod Rai Ji went live on TV on a weekday at 4, 4 p.m., November 2010, right? And we were just two years into our stay in India. And we watched that entire live telecast uh, by, uh, on, on the 2G report that Vinod Rai Ji published. So he put it on the website and we downloaded it. You can still go and download it, hyperlink given hai. And I'm sorry we haven't highlighted it. If you, it's really small font. Let me see if I can highlight it here. Uh, what Vinod Raiji said is basically $20 billion, ye jo number hai, $20 billion has been stolen from the country, right? So we read the report and we said, Are, these companies to we know. These are the same companies who fail our forensics, right? So we went to Delhi and we met him. And he said, can you help us? Can you train the, the comptroller and auditor general's team uh, in accounting fraud? So we went to Shimla uh, uh, to do a training course for their, this, the CAGs, because CAG, just like any other branch of the Indian Civil Service, uh, every year, new nae, nae log join. Karte hai. Uh, and then subsequent years, we now also train the fresh incoming group of Indian police service ke jo officers. Every, India, every year, India brings in 250 police officers. Uh, the National Police Academy is in Hyderabad. So every year we do a course for them as well on this, on this subject, right? And as we were doing all this, we were learning, we were learning fraud, we were learning how the country gets shortchanged, you and I get shortchanged, we were continue to meet these sorts of companies. So let's choose one promote since uh, in the interest of time, since these guys were next door only, uh, this was a memorable meeting from 2010, 2010, where we rocked up inside their office and promote again did his magic. <laughs> uh, no, again, it was one of the basic, uh, uh, questions around accounting standards when if you have a company and you sell your product to your own subsidiary, you're supposed to book profits in one and cancel out as expenses in the other. Uh, surprisingly, this company wasn't following it. Uh, and we pointed that out to which obviously the management wasn't too happy. Whenever the management reacts very uh, adversely, you know you've touched a raw nerve uh, in that case, you're in the right direction which is what we ended up doing. We ended up publishing the note. Um, and I guess literally soon after, within, within a few uh, months, uh, the whole scandal broke out. You know what happened to uh, financial technologies, what happened to the promoters there. But uh, yeah, I mean, thanks to Shilit uh, using these uh, techniques to uncover these uh, accounting shenanigans, um, you could stay away. Or at least at that time, we were advising clients. We advised clients to stay away. Uh, the stock uh, lost a lot of money. Had you been invested, you would have lost a lot of money. At least those who could follow our advice uh, could stop themselves from seeing their portfolio getting eroded. So, so these years, right, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, um, whilst they were exciting, as we were learning a lot, we were figuring out that this jail will go, and then we would realize that three years later, this jail will go. 
these guys were also politically very powerful. Some of them are still going to jail, by the way. One dude went to jail two weeks ago. Uh, he should have gone to jail six years ago, but anyway, he went to jail two weeks ago. Uh, um, and this story continues, right? Uh, uh, you know, if you think about it, again, USA, Japan, right? You saw what happened in FTX. If countries like USA, Japan, China haven't got to the bottom of it, it's also a journey for us. But the learning here is, the learning here is in no circumstances should you invest in such companies. These, I mean, these names are gone. Naam badal gaye hain. Actors wohi pe hain. The same characters are hanging around, right? And and what you and I have to do is not get seduced. Ki ek saal chala, do saal chala, das saal bhi stock chalta hai, right? I think Yes Bank ran for tej, how, how long? From between his license and blowing up, Yes Bank was. 14 years, 14 saal. And out of the 14 saal, right, even if you're a non-CA, you would have figured for 10 years that this doesn't make any sense. But we used to have professional fund managers telling us, ki tumho bevo kufo, tumko samaj nahi aata, ye bohut badiya cheez hai. Right, senior FIIs would tell us, sort of what you have to do is follow the cash on Yes Bank. And I would think, yaar, kaha pe cash, kya dikh raha hai tereko? Mere ko to 0.3% NPA dikh raha hai, right? Now, let's move into the positive part, right? When did we really hit upon the thesis? Uh, the defensive part was till 2013. The, the kind of the constructive part started in 2013-14. Now, what happened was, and, and the trigger was in a way Nandan's book, right? So 2014, mein obviously, Sarkar Badli, but in 2009, Nandan had published this book called Imagining India. Uh, if you guys haven't read it, worth reading it. He's basically laid out the whole vision which drives our entire digital economy, right? So he, he explains in this book in 2009 why Aadhaar makes sense. He goes on to explain why something like, he didn't know that it would be Jandhan, uh, Prime Minister Modi labeled it Jandhan and the, uh, the NDA government executed spectacularly on Jandhan. Um, then Geo made broadband free and then Nandan came in with the idea of UPI. Uh, today UPI accounts for 45% of national income. Just imagine, right, we're one of the poorest countries in the world. We're doing $1.4 trillion of real-time financial payments between me and my Chaiwala, between Marcellus and its uh, 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 paper vendor, me and the Sabjiwala, right? Now, this whole joining up of India, the networking of India, right, it started hitting us in 2014, 2015, right? The Financial Times at that time asked us to write a couple of pieces. And for writing those FT pieces, we traveled around the interiors of Maharashtra. So we went to the villages and we came back realizing the country is getting joined up. So, so for example, the lady who cooks for us, Jayashree, uh, I went to her house uh, in a village uh, around near Ratnagiri, a, a village 100 kilometers from Ratnagiri. And I was stunned to see uh, Bombay say uh, Bombay say that village tak din mein art bus hai. Everybody in the village. This is 2014. Everybody in the village has mobile phone. Uh, 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 half the village comes to work in Bombay. The other half of the village stays there and uh, studies there. All the bachas go to school. So we said the country is changing far far more rapidly than we are clocking because hum log bate bate ye sab natak mein dub rahe hai, right? Uh, and we said we got to make money from it. Uh, uh, thankfully, at that time, uh, we read uh, The Outsiders by William Thorndike, and we realized that the smart promoter, back to the Superman, what the Superman, the smart promoter, the outsider, the outsider does is, he quietly places big bets on the future of India far more smartly than the average promoter. But the outsider, the smart promoter, does not come on TV and tell you what bets he's placing. He gives you some general gyan ki capex cycle chalu hai, right? Uh, that led to the idea that we should turn this into, we should turn this phenomenon, that the country was changing positively and smart promoters were loading up on heavy bets on the future of India from which you and I could make money. That led to the, the unusual billionaires in 2016. In a way, that's the book where the Marcellus philosophy first started getting outlined. Since so, Rakshit, you wrote a big part of the book. Do you want to talk about unusual billionaires? Sure. Um, so uh, 20, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a bit of background to how the whole understanding about an unusual billionaire began. And that's where, um, in a way, our work on Asian Paints, uh, which kicked off in 2012 um, at, our, at our previous firm, uh, that was the starting point. So um, the first bit of realization was um, that our experience of covering uh, uh, some of the greatest companies in the UK, uh, and for instance, I used to cover the insurance sector there. Um, the best insurance companies that we identified there were actually not the uh, usual intuitive business models, right? The usual intuitive business model for, let's say, an insurance company is uh, uh, the HDFC 
bank type uh, uh, sort of a, uh, a smart way of uh, lending in all types of categories and uh, and sort of great management etc there is something unusual which happens under the carpet at many great firms which we learned in the in the uk and uh, that unusual piece is the disruption uh, to understand that disruption you have to ask the right questions from the right people in the ecosystem if you don't ask the right questions you just go by the mukhota the 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 sort of uh, uh, outer lining of the business you won't understand it so uh, when it was about understanding asian paints after having had all that experience in the uk um, the starting point was this was a company that was covered by fmcg analysts in india um, and uh, the approach towards coverage of this company was brand distribution brand distribution brand distribution right uh, how many outlets do you have how many outlets does your competition have oh wow you have more then you'll sell more uh, do you have your brand on tv well have you hired the best celebrity uh, if yes then yeah you'll be able to sell more let's put a buy on you if you haven't been doing that no i don't think you'll be able to generate roc that was a standard uh, sort of way of looking at uh, at paint companies uh, when we started asking First, the customers, why do you buy a particular paint, then the painter, then the dealer, and then some of the ex-employees, how did you deliver on all of these uh, sort of requirements of the customer, the painter, the dealer, we realized this is actually a very differently built business, right? And that realization, many of you would have heard us talk about uh, our understanding of what made Asian Paints' business model so solid. It's, uh, it's not brand, it's not distribution, it's actually the supply chain, the inventory turn which was actually quite a counterintuitive way of looking at a business. So that was the first bit. Once we did that and then we read about the outsiders, we realized that, look, this capital allocation piece of being a disruptor, changing the shape of the business and sustaining greatness over several decades is something that maybe is behind some of the greatest businesses in India as well. Right? And, uh, and hence, we started digging into the history of an Asian Paints, a Mariko, a Page Industries, companies who at that time, back in 2013-14, had spent several decades uh, building greatness, decade after decade after decade. Competition came, tried all sorts of things, price wars, new products, marketing uh, 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 sort of uh, campaigns, etc. Nothing worked. And these businesses, they sustained their greatness like clockwork. Their, their uh, sort of earnings growth rate would be in a straight line, 20, 25% CAGR. Their free cash flow growth rate would be in a straight line going up. Right? Um, and that's what uh, 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 sort of was the realization when we worked on the history, that there are three things that we need to understand very deeply about a business. Right? Uh, the first bit is, that the greatness doesn't have to be understood in just the here and now. Right? Here and now being great is only the starting point of uh, stock analysis. The greatness actually can be understood in the sustainability into the long-term future as well. Right? And the fact that disruptions are very frequent, in fact, rather than that being a risk to a business, it can be a driver of greatness in the long-term future where you pick up a business that keeps disrupting the industry decade after decade after decade. And if you can pick that sort of a business up, then there's, there's enough longevity to that business which we can benefit from, which was the realization number two. That when you do valuation of a business, you don't have to just look at the next five years. You don't have to look at just the next three years, right? The standard way of um, uh, doing analysis, and we used to be uh, uh, the standard stock analyst at some time prior to that. P multiple. Yeah, the standard way of doing the analysis was uh, look at competitors' PE, look at this company's PE. This company trades at 30% premium to competition. It's overvalued, sell. It's as simple as that. Or if some client pushes you to use a deeper concept called DCF, then what do you do? You say, okay, fine, I'll use a DCF. I'm forecasting for five years, then a slide to uh, disruption and a terminal growth rate of whatever, four or 5%. The fair value of this business is 30 times PE, right? Now, interestingly, 
that depth of D DCF will actually give you a 25 to 30 times PE on pretty much every company which is good in the current times, right? Every company ma making 30%, 40% ROC, you'll get 30, 40 times as the max fair value PE, right? And hence the standard note that it's trading at 40 overvalued, 20 undervalued, right? What we realized was the biggest part of undervaluation in a great business is the appreciation of longevity of that franchise. So that was the second realization, which we, uh, uh, in a way, weaved into the book by uh, uh, trying to connect dots of why longevity exists in various companies. And the third type of realization was, if you're actually an investor building a portfolio, there's something called power of compounding, which you can feel right in front of you by investing in great businesses. So can I just use an anecdote to highlight this? Yeah. So this is point, right? This is the kind of spine tingling moment at which Hamari zindagi badli. So, so when we were writing this book, we a simple sa crunch. Kiya. The crunch is in the book, the crunch is also in Coffee Can Investing. The crunch was ridiculously simple and it changed our lives. We said that suppose all of us were sitting in this room uh, in August 2000. August 2000 is We can look at results from 91 to 2000, 10 saal ke results uplab then. We said, let's look for companies who between 91 to 2000 have delivered return on capital above 15% and revenue growth above 10%. Har saal. Theke, simple sa criteria hai. And, and in August 2000, we said, here's a list of, I think, six or seven companies. Between 91 to 2000, six companies ne lagatar 10 saal, double digit rev growth and roki above 15 kya tha. So we said, suppose we ran an equal weighted portfolio, right? So this is the, this is the mental exercise we did. Suppose we have an equal weighted portfolio, how much do we I think the answer came to something like 26% So we said, maybe nine, you know, August 2000, 91 to 2000, maybe there will be a big year. 2000, we are buying at the bottom of the dot-com bust, that's why we have So we said, suppose we sat in this room in August 2001, and we did 92 to 2001. Same crunch, 10 years of 10% Roki rev growth, how much do we And the answer came to 23, 24. Suppose we did that in August 20, 2002, August, August 2003, August 2004. So in 2015, we realized it pretty much doesn't matter which year you sit in August and do the 10-year backward-looking crunch. Simple, right? We're not even using a brain. All we are doing is businesses with return on capital above Pandra and double-digit revenue growth. You'll see the crunch in unusual billionaires. And the answer was you'd make 24, 25 comfortably. Right? Agar aap ye karte rao. So initially, I thought, koi galti hai, aasa kaise ho sakta hai? Markets are efficient, no? Markets are supposed to be efficient, thodi na 25% you should be earning. So I told my colleagues, ya galti kar diya, you screwed up, do it again. They went back, they did it again, and they said, nahi, aasa hi banta hai. And that's when, right, I'm trying to give you a sense of real time, that's when I realized, oh my God, markets are seriously inefficient, you just have to train yourself to pick up the inefficiency rather than what Rakshit and I and all of us used to do. PE multiple, dekho, kya sasta hai, wo leho, dekho, or promoter ko face value mein lo, and sell the Clark Kent because the Clark Kent looks like a office worker. Right? Ab Clark Kent pe PE multiple kyu lagate ho? Ab Clark Kent pe pushte tumari CTC kya hai? Jada CTC mangta hai, you send Clark Kent home, no? Because you say side wala journalist to saste mein kaam kar raha hai, right? So 2015, the crunch for this book helped us understand not only that longevity hai, if you and I can train our minds to pick up the longevity, avoid the crook, the crook, remember, overvalued, the superman, the monopolist, the longevity wala dude, undervalued. If we can train our minds, we will make a lot of money in India for you, for us, for our families. Zindagi mein paise ki koi kami nahi hogi. Right? And that's, in a way, the point at which life pivoted for us. Right? And I came back to Friday desk. Aaya. This is in our erstwhile job. And this book, 0 to 1, was on my desk. Mr. Gubbi had left 0 to 1 on my desk with a little post-it saying, you might want to read this book over the weekend. I read the book on Friday evening itself. And Saturday morning, I woke up saying, कुछ करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि समझ आ गया अनयूजुअल बिलेनेस में 
दस साल में दस गुना पीटर थील टोल डस दैट इफ यू हैव अ कॉन्सेप्ट इफ यू आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड अ सीक्रेट इफ यू रीड जीरो टू वन बैक टू रक्षित का पॉइंट अगेन वट डज द मोनोपोलिस्ट डू द मोनोपोलिस्ट हैज अ सीक्रेट विच ही डज नॉट वॉन्ट टू शेयर विथ यू राइट मुरली डिवी हैज अ सीक्रेट आई गारंटी यू विच ही विल नॉट शेयर विथ यू ही डज नॉट केयर वेदर यू बाय इज शेयर और आई बाय इज शेयर ही विल नॉट शेयर इज सीक्रेट विथ यू सो पीटर थील सेज दैट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ डोमिनेंट फ्रांचाइज he or she has a secret around which the franchise gets built in a way we are sharing with you through the, these books the secret 0 uh, 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 to 1 led to us saying kuch karna padega uh, alongside that in 2015 in our erstwhile avatar i had written a note saying us folks wealthy people like us have 95% of our wealth in physical assets this is rbi data right 2015 mein humne note likha ki rbi ka data ke mutabik people like us have 95% of our wealth in physical assets matlab real estate and gold and we said even if you do basic maths this physical asset se kuch paisa nahi banega above the rate of inflation ab jitne bhi flat kharidte raho jitna bhi sona kharidte raho you not going to beat the rate of inflation right and as you and i age in that 2015 note we said as you and i age we will realize that we cannot fund our retirement by flats in panvel or wherever sarjapur or salt lake or noida or with bars of gold right? bars of gold se retirement thodi na fund karoge you won't take bars of gold to the you know the supermarket and say mere ko under do right so we said there's going to be a massive wave of financialization uh, 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 in 2015 so financialization ka samajh aa gaya 2015 bombay real estate was still booming whoever used to meet suppose you met somebody in hotel orchid in in, in 2015 you ask him kis mein paisa laga raha they would say abhi lower parel mein 6 flat le liya humne and you think yaar what's wrong with me why am i why am i buying asian paints whereas this dude is buying six flats in lower parel then you later realize there was nothing wrong with you there was something wrong with the guy because he was doing 10 year look back right so coming back to coming back to the 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 confluence of events coming together us figuring out monopoly compounding 10 saal mein 10 guna us figuring out how to avoid the crony capitalist chor ko kaise avoid kare us figuring out that all of us and our friends and our families have no choice we cannot afford to have the bulk of our wealth as we currently do as i suspect most of you currently do in physical assets it's going to wreck us absolutely wreck us because even if you assume let's take someone like me i will retire at 60 i'll people in my demographic people like you will most of us will survive till 85 that's 25 years of retirement if i have a portfolio which is the rbi representation of the country which is 95% physical my portfolio will compound at 7% gross of tax net of tax at 5 i guarantee you your and my cost of living grows at close to 10 every year my wealth will shrink at 5% long before i die i will be bankrupt long before i die i will be bankrupt and we figured out and this is when we were we were writing coffee can investing in 2018 we said done hai boss we don't even have to sell to you nobody has to sell to you you will come to people like us because you will realize buying flats and buying gold is an unmitigated disaster for you in the long run and thus marcellus was was born right i won't go into the books now one way to understand what's happened in our country right in one chart because i've taken you through a, a bunch of charts one way to understand what's happened in our country is is this chart what we have done here what we have done here is taken 10 year cycles right so for example when you see this uh, 70% i'm sorry when you see the 70% what this 70% basically means is that in the 10 years end ending in the 10 years ending 2012 in the 10 years ending 2012 70% of the stocks in the sensex outperformed the sensex theek hai in the 10 years ending uh, 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 2012 70% of the stocks in the sensex outperformed the sensex right so so let me give you a quick analogy right i went to a school in delhi there were 50 of us in the class 40 people didn't study 10 of us studied very hard right so 10 of us dragged up the average mark of the class theek hai but if you if you went to our school thinking that say on average saurabh's class uh, uh, cla saurabh's class gets scores of 90% and above right that would be true but that didn't mean half the class was getting above 90 because only 10 people were studying in the class we were dragging up the class average uh, 40 out of 50 students in the class were actually getting below the average right so back in back in uh, uh, back in 2012 70% of the market was actually beating the 70% of the sensex 
was beating the Sensex, right? And if you see the, the whole era, basically, let's call it the UPA era, it was pretty similar, right? 60, 70, 60, 70, chal raha tha. This was in effect, this was in effect, this, right? If everybody who does setting, if everybody who does setting ends up running the show, right? Then obviously the market ends up, the bulk of the benchmark ends up becoming setting, right? The last 10 years, the 10 years that we've lived through, the 10 years ending, 22, look at the data. In the 10 years ending 2022, only a quarter of the benchmark beats the benchmark. This is the class I'm talking about. Only 20% of the people in my class in Delhi, only 20% of the people in my class in Delhi beat the average mark of the class. Right, in the market's case, it's 27. As night follows day, yeah, or niche jayega. Yeah, 27 become, will become 20. So, lagta hai, pura nifty hai, sensex hai, BSE 500 hai. A small minority of the companies in the market are making all the money. Right, so if, I want, if you want me to put it in another way, the Indian stock market's market cap is around 3 trillion. In the last 10 years, we've added 2 trillion. The 10 saal pehle 1 trillion tha, abhi 3 trillion ho gaya hai. That 3 trillion, 80% of it has come from 15 companies. Just 15 companies have driven 80% of the wealth creation in India over the last 10 years. In the 10 years prior to that, the decade in which we rocked up in India, 26 companies drove 80% of the wealth creation in the market. 26, 2000 to 2010, 2010 to 20, just 15 companies. Right? Why is this happening? Because as you would have heard us say, country judrai, UPI, GST, telecom, the airports, the pentupling. As the country joins up, fewer and fewer companies can do an Asian Paints or a P-Delight or an HDFC bank or a Bajaj Finance. And that is the nature of the game we are playing here. Right? Be under no illusion. If you back promoters who don't have a track record of delivering, or we back promoters who don't have a track record of delivering, it is highly unlikely you will make money. Because it's becoming a super competitive economy, right? Let me put it another way. I'm an amateur cricket player. In our building ke cricket matches, mein I can get by because the others are also just as amateur as just me, right? But if you take me from a building cricket match and put me in an IPL match, obviously first ball, my middle stump will be blown away because my weaknesses will be made apparent at an elite level. The Indian stock market a decade back is like our building ka cricket match. Amateurs can get away, right? This setting, right? Building ka cricket match. The Indian economy today is increasingly like the IPL. If you don't have elite competence, don't even think about it as a promoter. And as an investor, if you're investing in companies without elite competence, life will be tough. So that's the backstory. Uh, we thought we should share it with you because you are amongst the people who backed us in our earliest and most formative years in Marcellus. Uh, I'll request Rakshit to take it from here and take you through the, the portfolio and results. And thank you. Right, so uh, this is a quick summary of how we built the portfolio. Uh, many of you would be aware, but uh, this is in fact culmination of the journey that Saurabh talked about. Forensic accounting is our first step, which was the first learning after we came back to India. Um, this is based on a proprietary uh, fraud detection framework that we've built uh, uh, that runs on filters. Uh, the historical capital allocation track record of the promoter is the second step, the, the sort of unusual billionaire's realization. Uh, that we had after that. Uh, the bottom-up research which, uh, which our team of uh, uh, 16 analysts uh, uh, does um, is, uh, is the third step uh, for which you might, have, um, uh, you might have come across this uh, uh, longevity uh, framework which assesses the here and now greatness uh, that, as I said, is the starting point of understanding a good company. And then, more importantly, uh, the tangible capital allocation and the intangible capital allocation, which is a succession planning score, uh, to assess the sustainability of that greatness into the long-term future, right? Uh, so those are uh, um, the, the steps, and this is the first tool for research. Uh, this is the output that we have managed to deliver in the last uh, four years. So we completed four years on 30th of November, uh, day before yesterday. Uh, until day before yesterday, we had compounded uh, 100 rupees in CCP invested on 1st December 18, 
to 198.2 rupees in CCP. So 98.2% total return, which is about 18.6% CAGR. Um, these two charts are the uh, breakdown of that performance. Um, the first chart, let me just quickly explain why there's a big difference between that chart and the second one. The first chart is effectively the percentage contribution of each stock to the 98% return, right? So the way to read it is, Bajaj Finance contributed to 15% of the 98. Uh, and uh, let's say a DV's lab contributed to 4% of the 98, right? Now, uh, the slope of this chart on top is quite steep, as you can see, compared to the chart at the bottom where the slope is very shallow. Why is that? Because the chart on top is uh, the share price weighted by the allocation in the portfolio and the time period of investment in the portfolio. And hence you can see there are several stocks which have spent no more than 12 to 18 months out of the last four years in the portfolio. They are all on the left because they didn't get enough weight of time of investment in the last four years in the portfolio. A stock which was there, for instance, Groove Finance, it was there in the portfolio for just two months. Um, something like an ICICI Lombard hasn't yet completed one year and hence their bars are uh, the shortest. Uh, stocks which have had the highest allocation and uh, uh, the longest time period of investment, they have had the tallest bar, uh, not just because they have also performed in a very healthy manner as share prices, right? So uh, the top chart weighted by two parameters, time and allocation. The bottom chart is taking out all those weights, right? The bottom chart is just share prices of all the constituent stocks over the last four years, regardless of whether we invested in them in the last one year or we invested in them for the entirety of four years, regardless of whether we invested 10% of the portfolio in them or 3% of the portfolio, regardless of the time and weight, uh, the bottom chart is share prices. What's quite um, uh, interesting to understand and uh, note here is that for the four year period, almost 10 out of the 14 stocks in our portfolio have had more than 15% annualized return, right? Obviously the 98% and the 18.6 is net of fees and expenses. The chart at the bottom obviously is gross uh, uh, returns of share prices only, right? Um, in effect, uh, telling us the, the sort of outcome of the process uh, of research that we followed, where we didn't pick up a company that either during our investment period or after our investment period delivered a minus 30% share price over the last four years. We also didn't pick up a company that over the last four years compounded at a rate of 50% CAGR and pulled up the entire return, right? Pretty much all stocks that were picked up, they delivered a healthy return between 15 and 30. There was no Superman and there was no dud, um, right? Um, so that's the summary of the last four years and uh, maybe we can open for Q&A now. So if anybody has any questions, they can raise their hands and we can uh, come to you with the mics. Hi, um, I have a question. Yeah. In front here. yeah. Uh, there's extreme amount of liquidity sloshing around. Um, uh, in, in India? In, in the world. Uh, with 0% interest rate or, you know, negative interest rates. Um, at least at least from my vantage point, I feel like the financial system seems well, like... One year ago, tha, right? Remember the challenge since we exited COVID, the world over I'm talking about, since we exited COVID and since Putin decided to attack Ukraine, the Federal Reserve has hiked base rates by 400 bips nearly, right? Yeah. And probably or 50, 50 bips hike karega. And if you look at India, we used to have, a year back, system mein surplus liquidity tha 8 lakh crore ka. From 8 lakh crores, I think we're down to 40,000 crores. So the excess liquidity has been sucked out by the RBI. And the reason the RBI has done it is, the Federal Reserve has done the same uh, in the Western Hemisphere. The reason they have done it is, inflation for them is whatever, was it, I think 10% now is at 8, 9%. So the excess liquidity circumstances that prevailed in the, basically in the decade after Lehman Brothers, and then got super accelerated courtesy COVID, it's gone away. 
Uh, it's difficult now to get free money, which is why if you, if you read the newspapers, right, her rose we hear about this startup sacking 10,000 people, that startup laying off 5,000 people, even in Silicon Valley, that's happening because of, of the fact that the era of free money that we enjoyed till roughly a year back, that era of free money is behind us. I guess my point was uh, true. Uh, the, the money supply has decreased uh, over the last year. It has substantially decreased. But I think it's just a matter of time. I think things turn on a dime, and uh, the, whether it's the Federal Reserve. So good point. I think in our country, things are turning on a dime. And I think this, what the gentleman is highlighting is actually something very interesting. So notice something. The US 10-year bond yield in the last 12 months is up almost around 300 bips. Shayad usse bhi jada. Right? The US base rate is up nearly 400 bips. The US 10-year is jammed up 300 bips. Our 10-year bond yield is up only 100 basis points. Right? And that's because all of us are pumping in $300 billion a year into the financial system. Indian households between bank deposits, insurance policies, mutual fund, PMS, are pumping in $300 billion. And as, as this gentleman is rightly pointing out, our cost of capital is unlikely to shoot up in the way the West has. US may who I cost of capital shoot up, right? A typical US home loan, a typical US home loan a year ago was sade teen percent. Aaj US may home loan has sade saat percent. The US tenure is, uh, the US tenure or US home loan may teen so bips ka farak ho gaya hai. So cost of capital, say a basic product like a 20 year home loan in America is almost as expensive as a home loan in India. That is an absolute remarkable state of affairs. And that goes to show how much our economy has improved in the last seven, eight years because of the, because of these sorts of people, because of these sorts of people being, being, being put to justice, because of the banking system being recapitalized, because you guys are putting more into the financial system. Our banking system is in re pretty good shape. They are struggling. Our cost of capital is bigger in the last 12 months, but this gentleman is right. Relative to the West, the jump in our cost of capital has been far more modest. And I think if the point you're making, and I think you're making that point, that over the next 10 years, as all of you in this room and the thousands watching, as you guys financialize more and more, and you will, you will financialize more and more because you will see that it's in your benefit for your and my children's education, for our retirement, we will financialize more and more. We, a, a decade ago, we were doing $100 billion of financial savings. Now we are doing $300 billion. Kar rahe. I think there's a very good chance a decade hence we'll be doing $500, $600 billion a year. As we do that, we will keep the cost of capital low. As we keep the cost of capital low, the sorts of companies that Rakshit is showing you here, the sorts of companies Rakshit is showing you here, these companies will do really, really well. Because think about it, think about the valuation of any of these companies, right? What are you doing? You're taking, let's take an example. You're taking Titan's cash flows. You're taking Titan's cash flows, longevity model use karke. You're saying, Agliya B salt, next 20 years, this is the amount of cash Titan will earn. Then you're discounting it back to the present day, right? Because that's how you value a company. You, know, you don't value a company by doing a P multiple. Doing a, uh, buying, valuing a company using a P multiple, as Rakshit explained, is useless. So as this gentleman is trying to say, you value companies by looking at their cash flow and you discount it back to the current day. That discount rate, the denominator of your cash flow ka maths, that discount rate is likely to fall over time because you guys will invest more and more into the financial system because that's how you will fund your children's education, your retirement, my retirement. Right? And that insight is powerful. In, a, in an economy where, where financial savings keeps going up, where capital is relatively easily available, companies that generate cash uh, uh, end up trading at, uh, at, at generous valuations. In contrast, companies that don't make any money, companies that don't make any money, there is no reason to value them, regardless of whether the discount rate is 5 or 15 or 20. If you divide 0 by any discount rate, you still get 0, no? And the challenge in India is if you look at the data, uh, we don't have that chart here, I'll talk you through it. If you look at the BSC 500, there are barely 60 companies, 60, 60 companies in the BSC 500 who generate cash every year. I'm not even talking about growth in cash flows. There are barely 60, 60 companies in the BSC 500 who generate free cash flow every year. The other 440, whether the discount rate is 15 or 10, they're still worth close to zero. But remember the insight I gave you, the crook will be overvalued. 
The reason the market is inefficient, the reason you and I can read the unusual billionaire even today, even today for those who are watching, please read the unusual billionaires, buy the stocks in it. You don't have to be a Marcellus client to do that. You'll still make healthy returns over the next 10 years. The reason for that is you're taking a cash engine and the discount rate on it over time structurally goes down. So to quantify that, in 2004, the 10 year bond deal in India, right? I can see several people who were, uh, who were, uh, who, were who, been who would be investing in 2004. 2004 mein 10 year bond deal, kitna hoga? Anybody wants to have a hazard guess? 16 percent. Today the 10 year bond deal is seven and a half man lije. Theek hai? In 15 years, 16 years, the 10 year bond deal has more than halved, right? The moment you keep dropping discount rates, the more the the moment you keep dropping discount rates, you'll keep pumping up the valuations of these companies. Right? And that's why, again, back to the PE multiple, it's a useless way of valuing a company. Not only are you underestimating the Clark Kent ka Superman Shakti, even the denominator wala piece, people are misunderstanding. Right? So unless people in the, if, if you in this room believe that we are suddenly all going to start buying flats in Lower Parel and Panvel again, and in Salt Lake and Noida, right? These sorts of companies are these sorts of companies are are going to continue compounding your and my wealth for a long period of time. Now I wish they compounded it for you every month, and I wish every month we could show you. Uh, what a slide! Kya hai? standard classic Marcellus ka slide uh, performance wala Rakshit. I wish we could show you this. Uh, this chart. I wish every month Rakshit showed you this chart. We could say that the blue bar is higher than the red bar, right? But because every month the blue bar is not higher than the red bar the inefficiency exists. If every month the blue bar was higher than the red bar, you wouldn't need us. In fact, we wouldn't need ourselves actually. Right? We would probably buy a tracker fund. We would buy a tracker fund which would say invest in the blue bar because every month the blue bar will outperform. So we wouldn't need ourselves. I would be sitting in Goa uh, enjoying having invested all my money in the blue bar. But thankfully for us to keep a job, we go through these phases at one level painful for all of us, where even over a three year period, these are net of fees, even over a three year period, we've underperformed. Um, but such is the course of life. Again, because we have done this journey for the best part of 20 years, we know that money In fact, it's not even some divine belief. Um, uh, let's take a simple example. Let's take, let's, take the, let's take the most obvious example from this slide. Right? Um, HDFC Bank, people familiar, right? HDFC Bank, market share gain in the last four years has been 7% market share tha, 2000, page 2017 or 18. 2018, 7% market share HDFC Bank. Today, HDFC Bank market share is 11%. Sabke samne hua hai, there's no hocus pocus. Profit compounding HDFC Bank last four years has been 20%. Share price compounding, 11 percent, right? Now, um, those who say P, P, E or P, B derate ho gaya hai, haan ho gaya hai. The response to that should be, we buy, we buy more of it, no. We don't sit there and say, HDFC bank, why did it not move? Let me scratch my head and try to figure out, right? Is there something wrong with the bank, Sashi Jagdishan, etc. There isn't. The market share gains are spectacular. You add up the entire private sector banking pack plus SBI, in the last four years, you won't, you won't get to seven going to 11. In fact, if you look at HDFC Bank's own history, 95 foundation, from 95 to 2018, they get to 7% market share. Okay? 95 to 2018, they get to 7% market share. From 2018 to 2022, they're getting to 11% market share. Which means even in the context of HDFC Bank's history, the run-up, this last four years market share gains are without precedent. The business is in great shape. Rakshid, what should we do when a business is in great shape and the stock price isn't moving as fast as earnings? Buy more of it. Buy more of it. Have you done that, Rakshid? Or have you been looking at the PE multiple? Thankfully, he hasn't. He's bought more of it, right? And that's our job. Our job is to keep loading up hundreds and hundreds of crores, as much money you can give us. We will keep loading it up. Whilst I would love to tell you that we will uh, only load up in months. Uh, sorry, your performance chart. I would love to tell you that we will load up more in months where this, uh, this line is above that line, the blue is above red. You can guess which are the months with the best opportunities. The months where? The months where we outperform, no. 
जिस महीने हम आउट परफॉर्म करेंगे दैट मीन्स द कंपनीज प्रॉफिट्स आर रनिंग बिकॉज द प्रॉफिट्स आर रनिंग नॉन स्टॉप राइट वी डोंट हैव टू वेट फॉर द नेक्स्ट क्वार्टरली अर्निंग अनाउंसमेंट फ्रॉम एच डी एफ सी बैंक बाई दी बड़ी वॉन्ट टू वेट फॉर द क्वार्टरली बैंक अनाउंसमेंट फ्रॉम एच डी एफ सी बैंक प्लीज फील फ्री सो बट आई डोंट थिंक तेज इज वेटिंग फॉर एच डी एफ सी बैंक क्वार्टरली अनाउंसमेंट वी नो दैट एच डी एफ सी बैंक इज अ कंसिस्टेंट कंपाउंडर धंधा चल रहा है अगर धंधा चल रहा है और मार्सलस आउट परफॉर्म कर रहा है राइट right? धंधा चल रहा है एच डी एफ सी बैंक का मार्सलस अंडर परफॉर्म कर रहा है आई एम सॉरी ब्लू बार इज लो ब्लू बार दबा हुआ है वॉट शुड वी डू वी शुड बाय मोर ऑफ द स्टॉक वॉट शुड यू डू इफ यू हैव द मनी एंड द विलिंगनेस टू इन्वेस्ट इन दीज सॉर्ट ऑफ कंपनीज यू शुड पुट मोर इन राधर दैन सेंग एस बी आई क्यों नहीं लिया वो तो कितना हो गया है ट्रिपल हो गया है कितने साल में तेज राइट टू ईयर्स ना रक्षित तेज हैजेंट टोल्ड अस टू बाय एस बी आई शुड वी बी बाइंग एस बी आई शुड वी शुड वी नाउ गो एंड स्टिक स्टिक आर क्लाइंस इज हार्ड अर्न मनी इन एस बी आई आई थिंक यू स्लाइड अराउंड दैट वाई डोंट गो थ्रू दैट so um i mean let me let me just quickly uh, give you a simple maths uh, uh, sbi is at whatever 15 16% roe today right um let's say kotak bank hdfc bank's roe is 2 3% higher kotak bank is also at 15 16% roe today right there are two ways of reaching a 15 16% roe one is the sbi bank way which is 20 21 times leverage less than 1% return on asset and hence the 15 16% roe right roa multiplied by leverage is the roe uh, the second way to reach the same 15 16% roe is the kotak bank way which is 2 and 1/2% roa only 6 times leverage and 15 16% roe right so that's the that's the foundation the roe piece on top of it add to it the capital uh, adequacy ratio twice of kotak compared to sbi right and hence the raw material available to keep growing at a very healthy pace in future years right so efficiency levels great raw material available to compound at a healthy rate very good and hence it makes a lot more sense not to buy a 21 times uh, leverage less than 1% roa business which won't grow sustainably at the rate at which say an hdfc bank or a kotak will um yeah i'll just add to that uh, say sbi for example has 100 rupees of loan book on that it makes 1 rupee that's the 1 rupee that's the 1% roa on 100 rupees it makes 1 rupee it has only 5 rupees as net worth out of that if out of the 5 rupee net worth if np is increased by 1% 20% of the net worth will be gone Five rupees will come down to four rupees. Twenty percent net worth gone. That is the five rupees, or that's the twenty percent which the shareholders have. On the other hand, HDFC Bank hundred rupees loan book versus that they have eleven or twelve rupees of net worth. On top of that, they make not one rupee, but they make about two to two and a half rupees. Plus, even if you get one one rupee of NPA, one percent increase in NPA, which has not happened for HDFC Bank in its twenty-five year history. on top of that even if you get that you get 5 to 7% of your net worth gone on the other hand sbi has gone from 2% npas to 10% 12% npas multiple times over the past 20 years uh, at 21 times leverage even a 0.1% change in roa will result in 2% increase or decrease in roe in a psu or psu bank uh, where we don't have any visibility on profits roas etc Go on, sir. But we'll do we'll do the gentleman in the green T-shirt, and then after that, let's go to the corner because he's been waiting for a while. Hello. Uh, uh, just wanted to know about the competitive advantage the Asian pens uh, will have uh, if uh, why they are starting that business of putti in Dubai and uh, importing it here. What is the competitive advantage they will get by doing so? Why not in India? This is number one. number 2 is that what is the uh, impact of the rupee trade agreement uh, with dubai whereby we uh, import gold uh, at uh, amlawad that uh, city and what is the impact of that on asian paints 
uh, sorry, on Titan Industries. And third question. Uh, <laughs> third question. We have some of the smartest clients in the country. That's why it's so much fun to work with you guys. Uh, it, uh, today only HDFC Bank has disclosed that they have uh, raised 15,000 crores at an interest rate of 7.86%. It's terribly high rate. It's tied to bond for a longer term. So what could be the impact on other banks if HDFC Bank, which is highly rated like this, is required to borrow at such a high rate? What will be the uh, uh, this position of other banks? They may have to really you know, borrow at a much higher rate than this. And what will be the impact of that on the banking as such, prof profitability of the banking companies. I'll request Dave to answer the third one. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll answer uh, Asian Paints and Titan. Um, so this is, uh, this is what Asian Paints announced, the three bullets on the right, uh, as the capex, right? Uh, this is backward integration um, in three different ways, right? Um, now, the, the one which is 550 crores um, is actually backward integration in a product where they were not existent till five, six years ago, and now they are um, uh, one of the largest, I would actually consider them to be the largest in the, uh, in the organized uh, putty industry. They've dislodged, they've dislodged the erstwhile, uh, erstwhile market leader, right? Now, so far they have built their uh, putty competitive advantage basis uh, relatively weaker margins. In fact, I would say more like a break-even uh, business. And uh, with the backward integration, there's a massive uh, upside towards margins and ROC on something that they've already built. Now, coming to the competitive advantage piece, why are they doing this? Uh, the way we understand it is, um, so five, six years ago, uh, when they were already 50% plus market share in paints, right? obviously as a, as a business at that time, you can make two calls. You can be a, a Colgate Palmolive or a Hindustan Unilever, where because your market share has reached a certain level, growth runway is limited, right? More of the same will not let you keep growing for another couple of decades at a very healthy pace. Or you can do what, uh, what they have done, what a Titan has done, what a jockey has done, where you build concentric circles with capabilities, right? So uh, 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 Patti, help them expand the channel footprint to begin with, right? They got the cement dealerships, uh, which they didn't have previously in that abundance. Uh, remember the numbers, um, Asian Paints had around 90,000 dealers in March 2020. Uh, they, uh, they increased that count to 145,000 in March 2022. In two years, they increased the dealership count by 70%. Roll back few years more, 2017-18, this dealership count, which was 90,000 2020, it was actually hardly 55, 60,000 prior to that, right? They've ramped up the, the channel footprint into newer geographies, into the, into the areas where they weren't so far selling uh, through, through the wide putty, uh, the, the uh, putty bit, right? And putty's backward integration is white cement. Um, at the same time, uh, think about what they've done with waterproofing, which again sells through the same channel, right? It is again a mason-oriented product, uh, uh, along with being a painter-oriented product on the walls. Um, and hence, uh, uh, they are not just in the renovation category now, they are also trying to enter in future into the into the uh, sort of uh, building category rather than just the renovation category. So this concentric circle addition to the business, right, in a way where you are leveraging on your inventory turns to the dealerships to deliver low margin products and generate high ROC, you are then doing backward integration to ensure that your competitive advantages become far better, more sustainable through the higher ROC you deliver, right? Uh, at one level, it adds to runway of growth. At another level, it uh, builds greater barriers to entry from competition, some of which is obviously coming from that industry inwards here. And just one point here, right? This is one of the reasons why all of us, right, everybody in this room, wherever you've invested, you, I, we should welcome competition for our investee companies. Because it needs a Virat Kohli to face a Harris Rauf to produce that six. A Virat Kohli facing a, an average medium pacer is not going to bring out his best game, right? People like us, you know, asking questions and earnings call, a great company with a promoter having $10 billion in the bank, 
it hardly matters to him what questions we ask. But the competitive instincts of a great promoter get awakened when somebody else says, I will compete with you. And it's actually very striking. If you look back at history, great companies inevitably up their game. Great companies inevitably up their game when a bowler with 150 kph, world champion comes at the other end. A Virat Kohli, if you notice, seldom plays well in a mediocre match. Right? You need that India-Pakistan feeling. You need 28 required in 8 balls. You need Harris Rauf at the other end for Virat Kohli to do something extraordinary. What Amit Singhle has done since he took charge, yeah, right. right? It is absolutely scorching to watch this man at work. It is absolutely remarkable, right? Clark Kent Superman, once again, Clark Kent Superman, what this guy is doing is absolutely remarkable. When uh, Unusual Billionaires 3 likhenge, right? we will look back at this period and say, this is remarkable. Once again, once again, he's not le let it re revealing his strategy. Once again, the team that we have are going into the ground and coming back saying it is complete land grab. Complete land grab. Right? The competitors have no idea. The competitors have no idea who they have taken on and they have no idea how to beat Virat Kohli. Competitors thought, I'm going to play a ball. Cricket is playing, T20 is. I'm also going to have a go. They had no idea. They're up against a company which is switched into sixth career and they're doing the a bunch of things which are totally destructive for their opposition and great for shareholder value, right? Obviously, pura strategy they're not going to reveal uh, uh, to you and me. It's our job to sit back, figure out dot by dot kya ho hai, and then join the dots and figure out this is a total land grab of a colossal industry. Akshit, back to you. Now, coming to your Titan question. So, this is actually interesting the way you frame the question. Um, a simple way to look at any jeweler is that it procures commodity and sells a design on it. Right? Uh, Titan actually is not that. Just like Asian Paints is actually not a paint company according to us. It's a tech-based supply chain uh, business. Uh, just happens to be selling paint through that business model. Titan is not a commodity-linked player. Right? So, uh, what is happening to gold imports, what is happening to gold price, what is happening to customs duty, uh, all of that is immaterial to the competitive advantages and the business itself of Titan. So let me elaborate a little bit. Uh, until seven, eight years ago, Titan was pretty much 100% commodity procurement on gold on lease, which meant that they would procure gold for 90 days, right? Uh, let's say 1st January, they bought 100 kgs of gold. They'll have a lease going on 90 days. During that 90-day period, they'll convert the raw material procured on lease into a finished product on the date of uh, selling of that finished product, which they'll ensure that it is before the end of the 90-day period. On the date of selling of that finished product, they will uh, consider on their P&L cost of procurement as the uh, cost, let's say this date happens to be 20th February. Whatever is the gold price on 20th February, not on 1st January, becomes their cost of RM procurement. And they sell at that same price. There is no commodity game here which Titan plays, right? Because they take gold on lease rather than gold being purchased on the balance sheet, running the commodity risk, and then doing something, right? Uh, as a result, whether at the time of procurement, there was this duty, that duty, uh, this price of gold, that price of gold, it doesn't matter to Titan. That was one piece. The second piece was uh, after the 2015 uh, current account deficit saga where uh, gold imports uh, were, uh, were sort of restrained through certain government actions, Titan has actually switched into the next level where they're saying that gold on lease will not be the entire uh, way of procuring gold for us. Gold on exchange today, I think is 30, 35%. If, if memory serves me right, one third of their raw material procurement is gold on exchange, where people like you and me, we will give our old jewelry, ask Titan to uh, uh, give us in exchange new jewelry that we'll procure, right? That they've converted into such a massive engine that it becomes a 30, 35%. Now that again means imports, custom duty, et cetera, et cetera, all that it doesn't matter to Titan's business model. And hence, in a way, what we did in the month of June with all of your portfolios was when uh, uh, some announcement came, some uh, customs duty on gold was increased from 7.5% to 12.5%, something like that. Uh, Titan's share price collapsed by 
right? From some 2,400, 2,500 rupees, it came down to 2,100. Um, and we increased our allocation. Just like Saurav said, when that happens, if you know that this is not going to have any fundamental impact, you actually buy more of it rather than get worried about those changes. Um, Tej, HDFC yes. Bank. So on HDFC Bank and interest rates, I think uh, they've been through multiple cycles. 2004, 16%, like we discussed, 10-year uh, treasury yield, they were making 4.5% names, 1.8% ROAs. 2022, 7.5%, 10-year treasury yield, they're making 4.5% NIMS, 2% ROAs. Uh, we've gone through taper tantrum, GFC, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we've gone through multiple interest rate cycles. The net interest margins or ROAs don't change. Uh, secondly, these are not interest rates that we've not seen in India. 2015, 16, 17, 18, till almost 2019, this was the rate at which most of the banks, NBFCs, were borrowing. Uh, and that's why at 7, 7 7.5 or 7.8%, uh, for 15,000 crores, which is about 1% of their balance sheet, uh, is not going to make a meaningful difference for HDFC Bank. And the same is the case for most other banks. Interest rates for most other banks is not going to be the concern. The way that they manage the balance sheet, uh, the way that they manage underwriting technology uh, is the bigger differentiator. Yeah, I have a question. Suppose if I have 10 rupees and I have given it all 10 rupees to Marcellus. Now, uh, the, uh, the, at the moment, you have only four schemes, like your CCP, LCP, KCP, and now you have taken in AIF, uh, which is your rising giants. Uh, that was the last uh, part of it. Now, suppose the classification of the money is on an X basis. For example, CCP was 5 rupees, or uh, 3 rupees was LCP, or 2 rupees uh, was KCP, and 1 rupee was AIF, or whatever it is. Now, if in the same uh, period, there is a huge uh, difference of uh, performance. Now, if you say, take, I, for example, if in my case, I have t done it two and a half years. One has become 2x, one has become uh, 1.5, and one has become 1.1. Now, how do we come to know, or would you be able to guide uh, investor that what should we do with the portfolio, or sure. at the same time, or if your AUMs are growing, or how does that help an investor to take a decision sure. on where to uh, remain invested? Or is there any internal uh, uh, jugglery needed? Because I think your stocks are the same 30, 40 stocks yeah, in absolutely. all the four. And, and so, I think lovely question. So, so here is the answer, yeah. right? Any portfolio with any fund manager wherever you are in the world. If you're investing with people like us who seldom churn, right? As you know, almost all our portfolios churn is around 10%. So we are buying and selling very little. If you're buying and selling very little, if you give it three, four years, your returns will be the growth of the free cash flow of the company, less our fees. Okay, so let's take CCP ka example. CCP was four years old yesterday. Free cash flow growth, 20% or 21%? 22% yeah, free cash flow growth. Assume for simplicity, 2% is fees and expenses. Net return of that is roughly 20%, right? So uh, 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 going forward as well, whether it is CCP, whether it is Little Champs, whether it is Kings of Capital, whether it is, by the way, Rising Giants is also available in the PMS Avatar. You will earn, we will earn, all of us will earn, jitna free cash flow growth aayega, subtract from that the fees. Okay? That's the broad uh, uh, thumb rule. And it works very well because that's how investing works. Investing is not driven by P multiple, PB multiple. Investing is driven by how much does the dhanda grow at? The growth of the dhanda less the fees is the return that the investor gets. Now, over the last 12 months, um, our returns actually have been pretty similar across all our products. And as I'm sure all of you know, our returns have been weak across all our products for the, exactly the reason you mentioned, sir. That, that the uh, 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 stocks are pretty similar, right? So, uh, little champs and RG ke beech mein overlap hai. RG or CCP ke, CCP ke beech mein overlap hai. Kings of Capital is the financial stocks from all these portfolios. By design, there's an overlap. The philosophy, as everybody knows, is identical. The fund philosophy across these pro four products is identical, which is the philosophy Rakshit showed you, which is first step, first step, avoid the crooks. Yes, first step, avoid the crooks. Second step, look for sensible capital allocators. Third step, look for dominant franchises, right? Same philosophy, broadly the same stocks, and as a result, over the last 12 months, broadly the same returns. Now, two year, if you take a two-year horizon, there is some disconnect. At a very simple level, 
if you, the more your portfolio has fallen, the, the free cash flow growth is broadly similar. Right? If I take the two-year number, the companies across our portfolios actually perform pretty similar. So whether it's CCP ka ho ya RG ka ho, a lot of people get very excited. RG, our rising giants, is down 10% since the PMS was launched in Jan. But if you look at rising giants ka profit growth, that's also around 20%. CCP ka profit growth also around 20%. Uh, little champs is a little higher. Profit growth, little champs, how much Ashwin? 20 percent right? So since profit growth is similar, if your portfolio has corrected more, whichever portfolio has corrected more, load up more there, right? But would you advise or we have to take that call? Because as I said, mine is all 2.5 years. One is 2x, one is 1.5, and one is 1.1. So there is a huge uh, right. difference. So, so my how, how do you... My uh, advice would be just stay put. In case you want to sort of, you know, do the rebalancing thing, stay put. Because ultimately, if you, if you look back three years hence, four years hence, it really wouldn't have made a difference. So let me take my example, right? I invested in CCP first December 2018, just then Chalua. I invested in uh, Ashwin Ka uh, uh, December, sorry, Ash Ashwin Ka Little Champs on I think 30th August 2019. 30th August, yeah, 1st September, around the la launch, 2019, right? 29th August, I didn't even know the date, because then I have put money, okay? Um, and then I invested in Kings of Capital in, I think, Ju July 2020, July 2020. If I look at my experience, CCP has done around 19, you uh, LCP has done for me around 26, 27. Uh, uh, little, uh, Kings of Capital has done 10%, and Rising Giants, I'm down 10%, right? The reason I'm not either se udar nahi ghumara, because I can see that almost all the portfolios, the profit compounding dhande mein is bees, 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 bees. And if I just stay patient, I will end up getting 20 and if the profit compounding goes to 25, I will 25 mil jayega. So do we have a benchmark? Like you take three or five years or, or should we just... Three, I mean, so or, Coffee Can Investing was explained, give it three years. The reason okay. give it three years is, if you give it three years, the effect of PE diminishes, the effect of profits or cash flow is greater. The shorter the time period, the shorter the time period, the less the effect of profit or free cash flow, the more the effect of Federal Reserve ne kya kiya, war kahan pe ho gaya, etc, etc. Right? Jitna aap time ko kheecho ge, the more you pull time out, the more Clark Kent ka Superman giri becomes relevant for you. In the short term, Clark Kent is sitting in the office doing the same thing as everybody else. In the short term, HDFC bank looks like any other bank. So, I'll just uh, add uh, one thing yeah, to okay. what Saurabh said, I think. Uh, Rakshit can come in with the portfolio rebalancing approach that we do. What I would say is the way we look at stocks, you look at funds or fund managers, right? So in your mind, you are allocating to different funds. Uh, it's called asset allocation. So basis certain framework, you would say, I would put say 50% in CCP and say, divide the remaining 50% between the other three funds. Um, now, for various reasons, if there is imbalance in this, you look at it a year hence, and you see 50% in CCP has become 40%, whereas something else has gone up. But your ideal allocation is that much. So your incremental dollar, or incremental rupee rather, you invest in such a way that post your incremental investment, you bring it back to that original allocation, which is exactly what Rakshit does with his portfolio rebalancing. Now, you, do, you, do you advise on that? Or we leave, suppose if you are passive, we don't do anything. I mean, do you look fine. at it, or you don't look at it, or you just look at your individual... Uh, uh, funds. Yeah, which is why I mentioned only with your incremental rupee. You don't okay. chop around with what you've already invested, otherwise you'll in incur transaction costs, including capital gains, brokerage right. and all that. But when you're topping up, for example, topping up, top it up in such a way that you go back to the same original asset allocation which fits your financial goals. Okay. Yeah, so uh, let me very quickly quantify this piece. Uh, you see, this is what we do within your portfolio, right? This is a single portfolio. Uh, yeah, this is a single, po same portfolio. Uh, during this six month period of the calendar year that we are going in, uh, right? Uh, 1st Jan 22 to 30th, 22, uh, 30th June. Uh, these are the stocks which were outliers in terms of weak performance. Interestingly, those were the stocks which ended up being uh, so the same Dr. Lal, Titan, Bajaj Finance, you can see here, Dr. Lal, Titan, Bajaj Finance, they were amongst the top performers. We bought for you extra of these stocks during May, June, as I just explained, right? Um, and, and hence, it has added value 
over the last four years as well, it has added a healthy, healthy quantum of value. If you, now we've done this for both clients who are giving us top-ups as well as clients who are not giving us top-ups. What Pramod is suggesting is, if you want to do the churn, do it only with top-ups, not without top-ups. The reason being, when you do this sort of an activity across four funds, right, the degree of churn will be phenomenal. Imagine, had these not been 14 stocks, had these only been four stocks. And then, you, you sell two of those, uh, or buy two of those here, out of the four, and sell two of those here, something like that. The churn in your portfolio within a six-month period will be 50%. Right? That's a massive churn. No point going through that degree of churn in order to get a 1 or 2 percent extra. Actually, you'll get a minus 1 or 2. Hence, do it only with the top-ups if you want. Otherwise, as Saurav is saying, stay put if there are no top-ups. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, good evening, Saurav and uh, team. Uh, this one question, you know, I've been uh, reading and you know, like, you know, hearing you know, about your investment philosophy, monopolies, uh, increase uh, in uh, sales turnover, ROC, cash flows. But some of the scripts you know, which I see in the uh, portfolio, you know, like, uh, I don't see any monopoly uh, or monopolistic traits you know, like in them. Uh, sorry to say, it's one of uh, Rakshit's favorite scripts, say Dr. Lal Pathlab, you know, like, when, I, when I see you know, like, you know, the pathology business you know, like, you know, specifically in the city where I live or even in the area where I live. You know, like, you know. Now, how does, you know, like, you know, uh, or how do you expect you know, like, you know, uh, these kind of companies you know, like, you know, to really give you know, like, uh, decent returns you know, like, uh, 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 to the investors? Right, so first of all, let me explain what we call as the monopoly. If you look at uh, uh, roughly 50,000 crores worth of pathology diagnostics business in India, Dr. Lal is merely two, two and a half thousand crores out of that, right? Uh, so it is not a 60% market share in a 50,000 crore industry. Unlike Asian Paints, where it is a 60% market share, in, interestingly, in the same sized industry, organized industry there. Now, the difference is, uh, Asian paints is 60% of the organized industry. Here you are looking at Dr. Lal in the overall, which is a heavily unorganized industry. Organized industry in India, in diagnostics, is barely 15%, 1.5, right? Dr. Lal Path Labs is 40% of that. The entire organized industry in India is around six to 7,000 crores. Dr. Lal Path Labs is around 2,500 crores out of that, right? Uh, that's the dominance. Now. Let's look at it like this. Healthcare is a regional subject, right? Uh, you can advertise on TV a soap or a detergent and expect from Kashmir to Kanyakumari everybody to see that advertisement and make a decision on whether to buy it or not. You can't do that with hospitals. You can't do that with healthcare. It has to have the doctor connect. It has to have the medical fraternity. It has to have the trust built with customers that can't be built overnight across state borders, right? And hence, you haven't seen uh, too many pan-India hospitals making money. You haven't seen even a Dr. Lal organically being successful in Bombay, and even a Dr. Lal organically being su successful in South in the last 20 years, right? So you look at Dr. Lal where it is present, and hence, half of India goes out. The same 35-40% uh, market share that you talked about within Organize that Dr. Lal has, you remove half of India. In fact, in North and East, within organized space, Dr. Lal's market share is similar to what Asian Paints is, right? 55, 60%. So in the place where it operates, it has monopolized it. But then it needs to do concentric circles. Otherwise, like Sir was asking, Asian Paints will become a Colgate Palmolive. Oh yeah, 90% penetration of the industry. Colgate Palmolive majority market share and gone. There's no growth. You grow at 5%, right? So that's where concentric circles means you do suburban, you do wellness, etc., etc., and you grow. That's the top-down view. The bottom-up view to answer your question is you have to build competitive advantages to drive growth. The competitive advantages in Dr. Lal's case are around supply chain of sample collection to report generation, Dr. Connect to ensure that just because somebody is uh, Tiger Global or Sequoia funded, can't come in and overnight take market share away from you in illness diagnostics, 
right? And hence, gradually, you build on to that capability. In future, Dr. Lal is doing many other things. Right? So this is what Dr. Lal has, uh, has done in the recent past. Um, when you compare it against a metropolis, a thyroke, thyroke is one of the e-pharmacies, right? Pharmacy. When you compare it against its competition, this is X COVID, X inorganic, this is just purely organic, same old, same old. Uh, the gap between Dr. Lal and others is massive, it's wide. It was never this wide until three years ago to begin with, right? Then if you read the three bullets down there, what they have implemented in the last six months is something that will even further deepen their competitive advantages. Dr. Lal was not a company which till four years ago would use technology to its benefit. It was just like a page industries was in 2017-18. It was great on processes. They were relatively fewer systems. In fact, page didn't even have a CIO, chief in IT officer till 2018, right? Only after they underwent a massive turmoil, they built that capability. In Dr. Lal's case, something very similar has happened. In the last three years, they have been challenged unsuccessfully by some of the e-pharmacies in areas where Dr. Lal hadn't hitherto built moats. And last six months, they've started delivering on something, a journey that they started three years ago to build moats in direct to consumer, as in lead generation via app and website, something that they never focused on. Uh, uh, when you do a Google AdSense, AdWords type of a uh, uh, search, Dr. Lal wasn't appearing previously as one of the top uh, outcomes. It does so now. When it comes to uh, getting samples from hospitals, the previous approach was just undercut on pricing of the competitor and get it. There's a different way to do it now. And uh, hence, the business is building stronger and deeper moats. Right? There isn't any other way in which uh, uh, we expect a company in our portfolio to go about it. Uh, as a customer, I would like to first of all thank you, uh, the entire Marcellus team, for doing the good job and you continue doing it. Uh, just one question. The other day, Tej was talking about the risks that we are willing to take and we are not willing to take. So we have always highlighted the risks we are not willing to take by way of uh, avoiding the financial crooks and uh, accounting uh, this thing. But what are the risks inherently which are there, which we are willing to take? And secondly, as humans, we do have our own biases. So how are we keeping ahead? Uh, how do we keep uh, uh, ahead of ourselves? So I think the main risk, and, and in, a, in a way it's the undercurrent of the discussion over the last uh, one and a half hours, the main risk that we are willing to take is, if you're building portfolios of 15 stocks, this is actually a 14 stock portfolio, uh, kings of capital is now about an 11 stock portfolio. If you run portfolios of 11, 14, 15 stock, that's risk, no? it requires serious courage. Right? Most people in our country run portfolios of 50, 60, kuch log to 120 stock ka portfolio chalate hai. Right? 120 stock ka portfolio chale, chale bhi farak nahi right? It's all good, yaar. I mean, you, know, you can go out all the time. Right? So obviously, it's, it's risk, right? And you know, obviously, you know, one of the reasons I, don't, I have a little hair on my head is, right, you, you sit at night thinking, we are backing, we are backing 14, 15 monopolists, and smart people like you are asking intelligent questions. There are other smart investors saying, Are Marcellus ne paisa laga. This is literally how the country happens. They'll read a newsletter. Uh, they'll say, this is a great Marcellus idea. Let me go and copy it. I'm talking about other investors. They'll say, Marcellus has explained to us why this monopoly makes money. They'll either read a book or the Marcellus newsletters. They'll say, ja copy karte hai. Right? And then we sit in the office thinking, the newsletter likhe na likhe. If we don't write the newsletter, we're not being transparent. If we write the newsletter, we're giving free financial education to other investors who are then copying us, right? So those are the risks with our strategy. You're running super concentrated portfolios and you are being very transparent, right? We are being very transparent with the world at large. The reason for both, do, both of these just to justify it, by being transparent, we believe we owe it to you. You are trusting us with a hard earned money. The less we can make this a black box, the less we can make this a black box, the more you understand what you're doing, the greater your ability to load up with us when the performance is off, right? What screws investors is happiness. Investors get screwed when COVID mein market gets 25% and they sell out in March 2020. Imagine, right? Imagine there must be people in India who sold in March 2020. The stock market is a disaster. They sold at the bottom. So the more we are able to explain to you all of this jazz, 
ये सब वेबिनार करके न्यूज लेटर करके द ग्रेटर योर एबिलिटी टू नॉट ओनली मेंटेन योर नर्व व्हेन वी गो थ्रू अ रफ टाइम लाइक वी हैव डन इन द लास्ट 12 मंथ्स बट आल्सो एक्चुअली पुट मोर मनी इन सो दैट यू बेनिफिट फ्रॉम इट राइट दैट्स द रीजन फॉर द ट्रांसपेरेंसी देयर इज अ कॉस्ट टू इट व्हिच इज अदर पीपल कॉपी अस बट ठीक है यार वी लिव विद दैट द रीजन फॉर रनिंग कंसंट्रेटेड पोर्टफोलियोस इज देयर आरंट दैट मेनी कंपनीज इन इंडिया विद द क्वालिटी दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग हियर in path lab nobody comes remotely close to dr lal right there is clear daylight between om manchanda and team and whoever else is number 2 in banking nobody comes remotely close to hdfc bank right aap market share gain dekho npa dekho growth dekho it is clear daylight between hdfc bank and other people in nbfcs nobody gets remotely close to a bajaj finance if we take little champs nobody gets close to a, 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 a fine organics in in emulse fires or to a garware technical fibers and fishing nets right if you want to back the elite and why are we backing the elite go back here again right why are we backing the elite because the data is suggesting that this is a country this is a country where the strong are getting stronger and the weak are getting killed all the data agar dimag se hum data dekhe the data is not saying sabka saath sabka vikas the data is saying sabka saath strongest ka vikas right if we have the strength of character to focus on the data stay rational we will run tightly concentrated portfolios the risk is you go through 12 month periods where the stock doesn't run up profits are growing stock doesn't run up everybody gets worked up hence the transparency kya kar rahe hain kyun kar rahe hain we are putting it in front of you so that you can stay calm and hopefully uh, put more funds in when the stock when the portfolios come off rather than you know by all means put more money in when the portfolio runs up this portfolio will run up again right you don't need my assurance for that i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure every single person in this room knows that this portfolio will run up again right 19 uh, 19 percent aaya last 4 saal mein agle 4 saal mein 19 20 aaya aata rahega but from your perspective should you put money in when the portfolio outperforms again or should you put money in when it underperforms all of you know the answer to that right so that you can do that ये सारा ड्रामा करते हैं हम लोग अब समझ रहे हो राइट दिस इज द रीजन वी डू इट ठीक है दिस आर द रिस्क वी रन इट नोइंगली एंड दैट्स द नेचर ऑफ आर दैट्स द नेचर ऑफ आर डीएनए दैट्स हाउ दिस फ्रेंचाइज हैज बीन बिल्ड नॉट टू बिल्ड 50 60 स्टॉक्स का पोर्टफोलियो लोडेड अप विद क्रूक्स मेटल्स माइनिंग पावर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पब्लिक सेक्टर एंड व्हेन इट गोज अप इन अ इन अ रैली वेयर दुनिया में वॉर चल रहा है Uh, you turn to the world and say, "I'm value investing." Kiya hai. That's the traditional way of uh, doing this. We believe that's the wrong way of doing this. Ultimately, that costs you a lot of money because literally, you give your money via the fund manager to a crooked company who obliterates your wealth and disappears to to an offshore destination. Hello. Yeah, uh, sir. I had a question. Like, uh, can you uh, tell me that uh, this uh, only you have PMS or uh, like 50 lakhs or any lesser amount small cases or all we can benefit like five lakhs, ten lakhs? Me, कुछ हो सकता है क्या? एक तो ये और दूसरा question था कि can you tell what companies uh, like top four five companies like it's a transparent thing? अभी you launch the AIF uh, I think a meteoric uh, quant something like that. तो उसमें कौन सा अभी लिया है? Because that is something different philosophy, right? So can you explain about that? Yeah, so I think the two questions are linked. Uh, so most of our strategies that we've talked about are PMS, where the minimum is 50 lakhs, whether it's CCP, KCP, Little Champs, Rising Giants. Um, recently, we've launched an option for those who uh, don't have 50 lakhs and want to invest less, uh, lesser amounts of money. Um, that's on the Wealth Desk uh, platform, uh, much like Small Case. You would have heard. wealth desk is similar to small case you can subscribe to that portfolio it's an advisory portfolio uh, it is uh, it is the same philosophy at the end of the day we are the same individuals we've been talking about 20 year journey and suddenly we can't say that we've learned something different the same philosophy of buying high quality companies at prices significantly below what we believe are their intrinsic values except the approach to arriving at that conclusion that these are high quality and these are undervalued is entirely quantitative there's no human being making qualitative judgments about the future of individual stocks we're not doing that there's an algorithm to identify quality and value the algorithm picks out a bunch of stocks and those stocks is offered to you as uh, as an advisory portfolio which you can very easily implement through wealth desk um, 
but otherwise, if you want to separately execute orders, you can do that as well. Um, so that is called Meritorc, um, and that's available on the wealth desk, as well as PMS. Some of you might say that, look, I don't have a brokerage account. I don't want this headache of rebalancing whenever you issue fresh advice. Instead, why don't you take, your mon uh, take my money and invest in the same portfolio? That can be done. We can do that in a uh, PMS platform as well. Good evening, Saurabh and the team. I've got three questions, so everybody can smile now. Good. So the first one is, we invest as a family. Uh, before coming here, we had a look at our portfolio. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, we invested in Jan 21, and we are not as lucky as what the others were. So we are invested in the CCP and uh, RGP. Now, from what I gathered from this seminar is that we need to have a time frame of about three to four years to have a proper or to get the maximum out of this portfolio. I just, the family is here. Today we were just wondering while driving, what what have we got, a, like, are we have we done the right thing? So I just wanted to know if you can say something about that. The second one about Asian Paints, we saw 20% of the promoter stake is pledged. What is in it for us as investors? How should we be concerned? Should we be concerned? Can this lead to something that happened in 96 about promoters having a, not sitting on the same page? And sorry, and the last one, simple. 2007, you had forecasted something in London about the economy. Do you forecast something in the short term for the Indian market? Okay, so quick one on Asian Paints. 12% um, uh, of the promoter's shareholding is pledged, not 20. Uh, that's the Dani family. Uh, 10 years ago, this number was 15%. 15 years ago, also, this number was 15%. So it's not a recent pledge. It's not a sign of weakness. Uh, this pledge was put in place really long time back um, uh, for reasons perhaps uh, uh, related to where the promoters wanted to invest their money to build other businesses outside of Asian Paints, uh, we believe. But uh, there's, there's no increase in pledge. There's no sign of financial weakness of any one promoter. Um, and this has been ongoing for the last 15 plus years at least. Um, uh, so that's Asian Paints. So, so you, I think you invested in Jan 22, right? Because rise 22. So you invested both in CCP and Rising Giants in Jan 22, right? Just to be yeah. So so and therefore, since you invested in Jan 22, uh, I think what the gentleman is getting at. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. CCP one year return is minus 3.3. You might be at say minus five, and Rising Giants since Jan 22 is down around 10 percent, right? So what you're asking us is, have you done the right thing? Right. So, so my my my. I before I give you whether you've done the right thing or not, first let me give you the, the data on hand. The companies in which we have invested your money, CCP ka paisa or RG ka paisa, the companies in which we have invested your money, they are growing their businesses, their profits at twenty percent. So, fact one, wo apna profits grow kar rahe hain percent se. Second fact is, in the March the year ending March twenty two ke jo annual reports published hue hain, those annual reports have come out over the last three four months. Most of these companies have announced CapEx. They're growing their plants. So for example, Asian Paints has announced a billion dollars of CapEx, right? Uh, 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 even the smaller cap companies, say Alka Elamines has announced 300, 400 crores of CapEx. Not only have they announced CapEx, from what we can see, they have bought comp smaller companies, they have bought land for factories, they're building factories. So pehla cheez, profits grow kar rahe. Dusra cheez, the company is saying the surplus that we have on the balance sheet Usse hum aur paisa lagayenge. Rakshit, there's a slide on CapEx wali story, you know, where CapEx is an indicator of future performance. Uh, uh, so, so you've invested your money in companies where profits are growing. Secondly, where companies are saying, hum aur grow karenge, aur paisa lagayenge in Hindustan mein. Factories kharidenge, chote companies kharidenge, factories mein aur maal bana ke aur bechenge, right? If you look at our country historically, and remember, both in your RG portfolio, sir, and in your CCP portfolio, you have India's smartest capital allocators. You don't have Marcellus fund managers inside your portfolio. Inside your portfolio, you have fund, uh, capital allocators of the caliber of an Uday Kotak, of the caliber of 
the Pedalite family, the, the, the Madhukar Parikh family of the ca ca caliber of the Choksis, Vakils, Danis. If I look at RG of the caliber of say the Kothari family that runs al Qaeda means or say Tarak Patel who runs GMF Podler. You have India's smartest capital allocators working for you. Now, I, whilst I would love to have told you that you have earned money in 12 months, you will stay there. I'm sorry you haven't earned money in 12 months. But if you are staying there, these promoters are going to deliver for you. More than us, they will deliver for you. They are working for you. And I, that, I think, is the be most beautiful part of the Indian stock market. Every morning we wake up, all of us in this room, every morning we wake up, the Indian stock market gives us a choice. Every morning the Indian stock market gives us a choice. Do you want to take your hard-earned money and give it to promoters who have a track record of doing naughty things and a track record of incompetent capital allocation? Or do you want to give it to promoters who have a track record of building great franchises, doing the right thing for shareholders and creating wealth? What we choose to do for you, and it's a privilege to do it, what we choose to do for you is invest your money with the second type of promoter. Jis ne acha kaam kiya hai, aapke paise ka acha istamal kiya hai. We look for proof that we aaj bhi kar raha hai. It's not just that we read the annual report and we sit back and relax. Right? There are 15 analysts, many of them youngsters standing at the back of the room. They run around the country non-stop making sure that such mein paisa lag raha hai, such mein dealership network bada ho raha hai, such mein technology mein invest ho raha hai. And when they come back with proof to our office, sometimes we increase the portfolio size because conviction aur bada raha hai. Our conviction on those portfolios is enormous. Many crores of our own money is invested in those portfolios and we would suggest you, you should stay invested. Aapka paisa banna chahiye in portfolios mein. The CapEx slide is not in this pack, but it's there in our previous webinar. So basically the summary there is, uh, um, once every four or five years, uh, there emerges an opportunity to accelerate capex, right? Usually this is around a difficult external environment because during a difficult external environment, only good quality companies with cash rich balance sheets can accelerate their capex and make it even harder for their competition to survive through the difficult external environment, right? Last two years was very difficult and hence there's been a massive capex acceleration for all of our portfolio companies. Now, every time this has happened in the past, in the subsequent two, three years, the free cash flow compounding the earnings growth has shot through the roof, right? The acceleration is massive, something you can see in the more recently reported numbers, right? So Asian Paints never reported a 20% uh, volume growth until uh, uh, two years ago, right? It's only in the last two years they've got that 20% volume growth number going. Um, HDFC Bank, Kotak, their average loan book growth in the last five years was not what they've been reporting in the last two, three years, right? The opportunities that exist through a crisis are far greater than the opportunities that exist in a normal environment. And that's what's happening to fundamentals. Share prices always eventually follow fundamentals. So your decision whether you made the right call or not should be based on since you've invested, what have the companies as fundamentals done? Rather than since you've invested, what have the share prices done provided your time period of investment is as low as, say, one or two years. It's not as high as, say, seven or ten years. So, while Strakshit brings up another slide, which I think is of great relevance, not just to the gentleman here, but to everybody else, let me quickly answer the question on what do we see happening in India. What our travels are telling us very, very clearly is China's implosion is a colossal opportunity for us. Specifically, we are focusing on chemicals, pharma mein opportunity. You would have seen both in Little Champs and in Rising Giants, several investments in chemicals and, and pharma. Because what we are hearing from Western pharma companies is they have given almost a fatwa. Western pharma companies have fatwa diya apne suppliers ko that nowhere in our supply chain, they have said, do we want China ka koi bhi hissa. Not in the starter materials for Dawai, not in the intermediates for Dawai, not in the API for Dawai. They have said that we understand that today China dominates the Dawai ka supply chain, the Western Pharma company has said, but they have said jald se jaldi, shigrahi, we want less China in the supply chain. Just to give you a sense of kitna bada hai China in the pharma supply chain, the world makes $250 billion of, the world makes $250 billion of API in a given year. India makes around $20 billion of that, with Divi's Lab, our portfolio company being the largest player. China makes around $200 billion. China's API industry is 10 times ours. Now conservatively assume that even one-tenth, even one-tenth 
our Chinese in industry comes to us in the next three years, we will double this industry. You can understand why we are therefore running around almost every weekend in Baroda, Surat, Wapi, Hyderabad, looking for more investments for you guys. So, pehla bada opportunity. We're looking for more. Uh, optimistic, fingers crossed. Uh, our team will be able to make some investments there for you. Second opportunity is, aap log har TV mein dekhte honge, iPhone, iPhone 14, right? Even if we get 25% of iPhone 14 ka production, and you, you would be reading, right? Wahan pe factory band ho China mein, right? Factory band ho China mein, Foxconn ka. At the moment, we make around a couple of billion. If we get 25% of iPhone 14 production, which means China miraculously somehow makes the other 75, that's itself a $40 billion opportunity. Total, uh, total smartphones is a $250 billion, $250 billion opportunity. Assume conservatively we get 100 billion of that. That's three and a half percent of GDP. Therefore, more work is happening around this. So, ye Hosur or Hosur or Chennai ki aspasi opportunity hai. South jana pad raha hai iske liye. Right? These are the two, two big China blow up opportunities. There are other China blow up opportunities, but hamare liye stock market mein quite difficult to play that. These are the two that we are focusing on. China's demise itself is an epic story. Now, next layer pe aate hain. Foreign investors have Foreign investors have three and a half trillion dollars invested in the Chinese stock market. 3.5 trillion. India ke pure stock market ka capitalization, by the way, is not even 3.5 trillion, right? Foreign investors have 3.5 trillion invested in the Chinese stock market. Chinese stock market ka 20 year compounding hai 5% dollar. Indian stock market ka 20 year compounding hai stock market, nifty 50. Indian stock market ka 20 year compounding hai 14% dollar. We are the world's second best stock market on a 20 year horizon, the world's third best stock market in a 30 year horizon. And yet, foreign investors have three and a half trillion invested there and 0.6 trillion invested in India. One sixth, one sixth. Now, every morning, every evening, morning foreign investor in our office, aata hai. evening our colleague in New York, Achint, gets us on a conference call with foreign investors. And I'm pretty sure this is happening to other fund managers as well. Given this level of intense uh, FII interest, where the FII comes to our office and sits for hours on end, looking at these portfolios, looking at these slides, even if you assume that the 0.6 that the foreign investor has in India just doubles. Manu, China said 3.5 ka, 3 kar diya. Half a trillion they toggle over here. Assume further, they do this over the next three years. Dire dire, shanti se, nahi to aapka mera kya hoga, right? If they do this over three years, Right? I'll leave you to do the maths to what will happen to these stock prices that we've been discussing today. Right? Shanti rakhye, control me rahiye, paisa lagate rahiye, colossal opportunity hai. Provided we don't score own goals as a nation, provided we don't score own goals as a nation, the next three, five, ten years will be epic for all of us, but we have to maintain our nerve and stay focused on quality. Now, the reason I asked Rakshit to bring this talk, uh, this start up was, this is basically the Nifty 50. The left hand side is the Nifty 50 uh, 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 ranked by which stocks have given performance in the last 12 months. Okay? Ranked by which stocks have given performance in the last 12 months. Right? I'm sorry, it's chota sa. It's chota sa, uh, but I'll read out. So, um, let me start from the bottom. The stocks which are the most wretched performers in the Nifty 50. Marcellus ke sare stocks wahan pe hai, to main naam leta unka, so that uh, you know you guys you know feel the feel the craziness of what's happened. Second worst performer in the Nifty 50 in the last 12 months. Second worst performer is the largest API manufacturer in India, a company with 40% ROC and non-stop free cash flow generation. The company is called Divi's Lab, down basically 30%. Right? Profit profit nahi gira hai. Divi's Lab down 30%. We just discussed discuss China wali story, right? Uh, moving a little further up from the bottom, fifth worst stock, fifth worst stock in the Nifty 50 in the last 12 months, a company you might have heard of called HDFC Life Insurance. Naam suna ka apne HDFC Life Insurance, 18% down last 12 mahine mein. Te jiska profit gira hai kya HDFC Life ka? Up 18%, right? Uh, stock markets are efficient, no? Profit down, profit up 18, uh, the, amongst the large life insurers in the country, the fastest growing by the way. Growth ki bhi dikkat nahi hai. Fastest growing of the big life insurers. Profit up 18, share price down 18, right? Uh, and then moving up, say, another five names. Tenth worst stock, or tenth worst stock in the Nifty in the last 12 months, a company you might have heard of called Bajaj Finance. Down 5%. Te jiska profit gira hai ke last 10 mahine mein? Kitna chada hai profit? Up 30%, right? 
So stock markets are efficient, you see. Right now, let's invert it. Let's go to the top of the Nifty, the commanding heights of Indian capitalism. Yeah, the people in the front can see a remarkable company, hidden gem, called Coal India, up 70%. Right, up 70% coal India, monopoly. Right, Marcel is philosophy fit on a chair. Rakshit, what are you doing? Marcel is philosophy fit on a chair. 70% coal India rally. Uh, 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 if you guys are interested, just let Pramod know. We will open a public sector PMS. Uh, we've got coal India there. We've got NTPC, another monopoly. Right, very low cost of capital, I'm sure. Uh, we've got State Bank of India, right, uh, uh, doubled in the, tripled in the last 12 months. Right, you get my drift where I'm getting at. Right, the country is changing in front of us. Our responsibility for all of you is to help you capitalize on the opportunity. Our responsibility is not to take your money and stick it in a casino, where if, a, if Coal India goes up 70 and Divi's goes down 30, we panic and say Divi's based though. What should we do? We should buy even more Divi's. What have we done, Rakshit? Double, Double Divi's. Yeah, our kaam hai. It's a privilege to do it. It's a lot of fun to do it. It will make all of you money. It will make us money. And that's why, sir, uh, it's an opportunity. We are grabbing it with both hands. We would request you to consider doing the same. Yes, sir, in the, in the striped t shirt. So, my answer is simple, hai na, sir. You are in which line of work mein ho, so that I can calibrate my aap financial. Mein ho, hai? DCF modeling aapko hai hoga, right? You take the cash flows of a company, you discount it back. Hai? Discount it back. Duniya ka risk free rate kon chalata hai? Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve ne duniya ke risk free rate ko kya kiya? 4% se chada diya. Now, if a company has zero cash flows, zero free cash flow, which is most of the companies in our stock market, right? Remember I said BSE 500 mein sirf 60 stock hai jo har saal cash flow raate hain. That means 440 stocks have no cash flow. So if a company has zero free cash flow, it doesn't make any difference, no? Discount rate bada ya gira because you're discounting zero. Whether you discount zero by 5% discount rate or 10, it makes no difference. But unfortunately, because we are who we are, we invest in companies, we invest in companies which are India's largest free cash flow generators. These are India's largest free cash flow generator. Now, if you take a massive pile of cash, you take a massive pile of cash over the next 20 years, and you discount it back at say 13% as opposed to 10%, what will happen to the value of the company? It will fall, no? Right? If the discount rate goes up, the value of the company falls. Now, the call you have to make, if you want to do it like this, is, is this the permanent state of affairs that discount rate badta rahega? Or is this, as the gentleman down here in the front figured out very quickly early on, that this is an aberration? This is an aberration, the Federal Reserve hiking by 400 bips in 12 months, mere zindagi mein nahi hua hai. Right? Now, in all, in all sincerity to all of you, we figured out when Putin attacked, when Putin attacked uh, 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 Ukraine. When he attacked Ukraine, we didn't know how long it would last, but we said, if this goes on, the discount rate Fed will have to increase. Because it's clear, if Putin attacks Ukraine, commodity prices will roar up, it will push up inflation, Fed will have to increase the rates. And the choice we had was basically selling these stocks and buying for you, which stock? Coal India. And Power Grid. Power Grid is a regulated company, so 14% of the ROI comes. Now, I don't know how many of you would have stayed with us had we sold these companies, right, rather than Rakshit Ranjan buying more Divi's Lab and buying more Dr. Lal and buying more HDFC Bank, had he done a webinar saying, uh, it's dawned on us that the discount rate is up and therefore these stocks will struggle. So what we've done is we've repositioned your portfolio into 12 public sector stocks. Uh, I mean, would have, we would have looked like stars in the near, near term, but I don't think this room would have more than 10 people listening to us had we had a portfolio loaded up. So if you ask me for the technical answer, kyun nahi chala hai, this, this would be my answer. But that being said, uh, we spend no more than five minutes in a given day thinking about ye wala. Uh, I mean, un until, until you know, we prepare for these sessions, I don't know that Coal India is this you know, miraculous company which has grown by 60%. Now, that's us. There are other fund managers who are very clever. They're able to reposition their portfolios. All credit to them. We can't do it, we can't do it. If we reposition your portfolios, dump the niche wale stocks and buy public sector, uh, we will destroy you through transaction charges. And then when the public sector blows up, Tej told you about SBI, 
right? Tej might just re repeat that SBI ka financial arithmetic because it's worth understanding, right? This is a very successful stock. It's the sixth most successful stock, up 25% in the last 12 months. So this is a Ganit Samjado. Yeah, 100 rupees of uh, loan book on which they earn 1 rupee. 5 rupees is shareholders' equity. So out of 100 rupees, even if 1 rupee goes bad, which it has multiple times over multiple years, 20% of the shareholders' funds of our net worth gets blown off. Uh, that's 20% of risk just by investing in SBI, even if they get wrong, they get their lending wrong by even 1%. Uh, SBI ka agri book kitna bada hoga? Uh, uh, SBI's agri book itself would be, there are a 26 lakh crore rupee bank mm -hmm. uh, in terms of loan book. Of that, about 10%, about 3 lakh crores would be agri. And agri mein kuch barsaat ka effect aata hai kya? Yeah, yeah. This is a blinding insight I had suddenly into SBI. That Barsat ka effect aata agri ke upar. You know, perhaps, perhaps it has something to do with about why we don't buy State Bank of India. But that's that's our answer. That we have to stay rational. We can't take trading calls, which might look very clever in the near term, and it's very tempting to do so. It's very tempting to take trading calls. A big part of you is, you know, especially when I was younger, you used to used to be about impressing other people. Dusro ko khush karo. Jitna near term mein khush karoge, utna gratification milta tha, paisa aata tha. But as you get older, you sort of develop a degree of indifference, saying, honestly, at many levels, if somebody wants to invest in those stocks which are at the top part of the table, they're welcome to do so with other people who have a mindset which can invest in those. We are happy doing the bottom part of the table. That's what we are good at. We understand it, and we have put our entire life's wealth behind the Nietzsche part of the table. Our view is uh, the Fed hiking by 400 bips is an aberration, because if they do it again, they will wreck their they will wreck their own economy, other things being ignored, right? And by and large, unless you, know, unless you and I are seeing a different reality, all the indications are that that war is throttling off, right? Uh, uh, from what I read two weeks ago, America gave immunity to the Saudi prince. One week ago, America started oil, buying oil from Venezuela, right? Both of these are countries which America supposedly wasn't uh, seeing eye to eye, right? You've got to give them full marks for complete rationality, right? Principles, rationality. Right? And then uh, yesterday we heard uh, FT ka fund page tha that Biden is open, ready to talk, uh, open talks with Putin. Now, aage stock price ka kya hoga? Don't ask me. Don't say, is this the right time to put money in CCP? I honestly don't know. We don't spend time on that. We spend time on the monopoly aspects that we discussed. Sir, we take I the last two <coughs> questions last here at the back. Questions. For everyone, the yeah. the, for everyone, the fund managers are available. We will take the questions yeah. over dinner. One question yeah. from him and one question so from one him question as of now. I've, I've, got, I've got two questions actually. The first question is, uh, do you think CBDC is going to be a boom or is going to be a business disruptor, especially for the banking and financial services? And have you seen anybody actually gearing up to make that as a boom for, boom for them? Right. So it looks, the CBDC, the way India is currently doing it, largely we simply getting rid of the notes. I mean, this is the pilot, but if the pilot becomes a live run, we'll basically reduce the amount of paper currency and turn it into a digital currency. It is not crypto and it is not a game changer in the current avatar that the RBI has announced it. Uh, I think the country spends around, uh, the country spends around a billion dollars a year printing notes, uska saving ho jayega, right? We'll save a billion dollars if we flip from physical to, to digital currency. Won't it impact CASA of the banks? I don't think so. See, if you look at the, uh, the UPI data, it's very interesting actually. 45% uh, India, 45% of our current transactions are already going through digital. UPI plus RTGS plus NEFT, 45% is going on. One it was 20. Right? And what that is doing is, it's reducing the sp speed. It's reducing the speed that I need to pay you, you need to pay me. Right? So from that perspective, for small businesses, the working capital cycles are improving because chota business, uh, NPCI ka data bol rai, 20 percent of small businesses are entirely on UPI already. So as small businesses adopt UPI faster and faster, their float will actually increase right? because unka working capital come ho rai. In effect, large businesses hang, mess around paying chotas and in UPI, it's becoming harder and harder to do that. Furthermore, every bank that Tej takes us to meet, Every bank, we were at another investee bank yesterday, is now creating algos, basis, UPI usage of the customer. 
So lending basis UPI data will accelerate. Uh, and to your point in CASA, as if float for small companies improves, which is the highly likely outcome of UPI, it should result in the CA piece, Saka Patani, CA piece uh, benefits on that. Um, um, carry on with your... Yeah, and the second question that I had was, out of all the businesses that, or the uh, companies that you've been reviewing, have you seen anyone actually doing something meaningful on ONDC? So the banks own ONDC, right? So just think about it. Let's carry on further from UPI. UPI, mein banks ko dikh raha hai that Marcellus ke office ke bahar chai wala 3,000 kap chai bech raha hai. Marcellus ke employees wo QR code karke pee rahe hai, right? And it doesn't take a, you know, a, a, a genius like Aditya Puri to figure out that this is a colossal working capital finance opportunity for chota businesses uh, who are moving on to UPI. So wo to sab ko dikh raha hai. What the banks have done uh, uh, is, the banks have built ONDC. It's owned by the banks, right? So no, it's ONDC not owned by the banks. Haanji? ONDC is not owned by the banks. It's open network digital. Uh, Haanji, it's owned by the, share, the shareholders are the bank, banking system. Bharat Sarkar ka stake nahi hai usme. The shareholders of ONDC are, are the banks, right? Now, that in a way gives them, if they are able to, get, abhi beta mein chal rahe, if the beta goes live, it gives the bank enormous leverage on all of us. Because just think about it. Aaj kya ho aaj hum monolithic platforms mein, we go to Amazon or Flipkart, and the buyer and the seller are both controlled by the, the monolithic platform. The monolithic platform basically chooses uh, who you buy from, what payment system you use, what delivery system you use, right? In ONDC, the construct, if the beta becomes an alpha, if the beta goes live, you choose, you could be an Amazon customer, but the seller could be anywhere in the country. Right? It could be an independent bookseller in Khan Market in Delhi selling you books on, or even though you're an Amazon customer, you will choose your payment method, you will choose your delivery method, right? Now, who will track you through every step of the journey? The banks will. And their ability to then monetize that data will be enormous. They will become basically the new app. In a way, what Bajaj Finance is doing through its app, if ONDC goes live, becomes we, the whole country becomes like a Bajaj Finance app, right? With the banks having that access to privileged data. I'm sure in due course there'll be a discussion on how to data use karenge so that they don't, uh, you know, they don't mess around with our privacy rights. But it's remarkably, if ONDC goes live, for small businesses, it's a game changer of epic proportions because it frees them up from operating on giant platforms who, who squeeze them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I will begin, I have two questions. I'll begin with the frivolous one. When you uh, put your own money into uh, Marcellus's portfolios, what fee structure do you choose? So, so I'll give you a hint there. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Uh, we'll slide on 19.96 wala, and we'll do the maths together, right? Since sure, the, sure. Let's make this the last question of the evening because I think the hotel staff are also. I, I, I have just one more uh, question after this was a frivolous one. So let's quickly do the maths. Yeah, 98.2 Rakshit Kagar kya hota hai? Iska 18.6. Mante 19 karte hain, hai? 19 ka Kagar uh, promote the the hurdle is. 8, right? Up to 8, there's no fees on the performance fee. Uh, 19 minus 8, help you with the maths, it's late in the day. 19 minus 8 is 11, right? 19 minus 8 is 11. 11 per promote, our fees will be 20%. So we end up taking 2.2. So if you go by the last four years, if you, if you do this, which we would like, by the way, we urge everybody, performance fee karo. Uh, it's good for us. Zero fixed fee pe chalega mara, right? Middle class log hai, kam pe chilenge. <laughs> two point two hum ko mil jayega, right? And I reckon thoda sa jada hi milega because the events of the last twelve months have dampened this, dampened this eighteen percent. But in a, even in a tough four year period, we will end up earning two point two. And therefore, if you have a choice between that and a fixed fee rate which is lower than two point two, from your perspective, it makes sense. Our instruction to all our colleagues in sales is, uh, we should be very happy if the client doesn't want to pay a fixed fee. We should be totally happy with a zero fixed fee and the performance fee construct. And all of us, as you can imagine, as staff are on fixed fees. All right, my, fantastic. My parents are also on fixed fees, by the way. All right, even I'm on fixed fee. <laughs> so now my less frivolous question. I came into uh, the Kings of Capital uh, about a year ago, and I'm 10% down which I'm not complaining about. Uh, now my question is this, that at the same time, I uh, put 25 lakhs into PSU banks. Why? Because I heard uh, late Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala saying on television that Canara Bank is a good bet. 
today, uh, my KCP portfolio and the PSU portfolio is the same. I have made a happy mistake. What do you reckon now should be my strategy after having made this happy mistake? Yeah, so uh, PSU banks uh, have obviously done very well over the past 12 months, but uh, the same maths that we've discussed for SBI, uh, that's the same math which applies to all PSU banks. Um, I'll just try and find a slide over here on what's happened, uh, especially to banking over the past uh, two years. Uh, the simple slide which will explain this is this. Higher the NPS, higher the returns. So. Uh, if you would have invested in SBI, you would have earned whatever you want, uh, which is, I think, uh, 50 or 60% uh, over the past one and a half year. However, the returns by investing in Bank of Baroda, Canara Bank, which had NPAs even higher than SBI, would have delivered even higher returns. So this is what BSU banks have done because they've enjoyed great tailwinds. And when you are leveraged 20 is to 1 and you enjoy tailwinds on top of that in the banking sector, uh, I don't think uh, that uh, share prices will further tank from there on. Uh, plus, uh, if you're already at 10% NPS, I think the only way to go from there is down. Uh, you can't increase from 10 to 12% NPS. On the other hand, Kotak Bank, HDFC Bank did not need tailwinds. Uh, when the banking sector was growing at 6-7%, they were still growing at 20%. When the banking sector is growing at 16-17%, they're growing at 23-24%. Uh, on the other hand, all of these companies, all of the PSU banks will grow only when uh, there are tailwinds. So while it, it's worked over 12 months, there have been historically uh, multiple periods when it's worked over 12 months. However, for the same companies, the uh, companies which are showing up as 40, 50, 60% returns over the past one and a half or two years, the 10-year returns are flat. Uh, the 10-year returns are almost zero for most of them. So the most well-managed, well-run companies are the ones which we have in the portfolio. If you want to invest for the long term, I'd suggest uh, that you stick to KCP because uh, risks can uh, you know, not play out over a 12-month period. They will definitely play out over a longer period of time. Yeah, so we'll uh, uh, shut the Q&A down here. Uh, we can continue the chat over dinner. Uh, so I would like to thank you all for listening us patiently and posting some great questions. Uh, we hope uh, we were able to answer your queries. Uh, for the viewers uh, joined us live on YouTube, uh, I would like to apologize for the small technical glitch due to which uh, uh, there was a delay. Uh, so, but the recording would be available shortly on our website, so you'll be able to uh, view the complete uh, uh, webinar there. So thank you and please join us uh, for dinner uh, across this room.